Studying the CFA alongside work is very tough and if you're going to succeed, you need to do it in a way which is healthy for your mind and your body. Otherwise, there's no point. Now, I and many others have made videos on how to study for the exams, but very few people have made videos on how to stay healthy and disciplined throughout. So I'm going to do just that. Now, obviously you have to want it, otherwise everything else in this video is totally irrelevant. However, assuming you do, this is how you can do the CFA in a healthy way and smash the exams. Now, if you're new here, I'm Harris and I'm an investment banker and CFA charter holder who studied at Imperial College London. Okay, let's start with my mindset and discipline. Now the CFA is an absolute beast. It requires roughly three to 500 hours of study per level. There's tons of material to get through and all alongside work. So it can be overwhelming and it's very easy to become paralyzed, which is why so few people succeed. So as a result, there can be some negative sentiment that surrounds the CFA. So I remember at the start of my journey, I was sat at a table with other potential candidates whilst the CFA was introduced to us. And there was so much negativity in the room. People said things like it's hell, you'll hate your life. It's impossible. The pass rate is so low, etc. If you let this kind of thinking influence your mentality, it's going to be very difficult. So before you get into how to study for and pass the exams, you need to believe you can achieve it. And the way you do this is through visualization, which is so powerful. So many highly successful people, such as Oprah Winfrey, LeBron James, Michael Phelps, have attributed their success to the power of visualization. So you have to imagine yourself conquering the CFA. So how you'll sit down and study, how you'll learn and grow, how you'll balance it with your life. You need to paint the picture in your mind. Convince yourself it's possible. Don't let other people's negative thoughts get to you. That's what I did. I sat at that table and smiled and thought, these are your limiting thoughts, not mine. I'm going to smash the CFA charter and show you it's possible. So I went home, mapped out a timeline, set up a study schedule, visualized myself passing those exams and the feeling of achievement that that would bring. And then I committed to making it happen. Now, of course, visualization and belief alone are not enough. You still need focus, discipline, techniques, etc. But to be honest, that's the easy part. And I'll cover that in the rest of the video. But importantly, you must start the journey with the conviction that you will go all the way despite the challenges on the horizon. Before I move on, I want to give you an exclusive opportunity. There's lots of information out there about the CFA and many prep providers that teach you the content, but there's very little information on how to prepare yourself mentally, balance it with your life, pass all three levels first time and make the most of the charter. My comprehensive smash the CFA program will help you do exactly that. So if you're interested in helping me build it and getting exclusive access to a studying masterclass that got me first time passes and 90th percentile scores, me and a community of fellow candidates, discounted study materials with up to $460 worth of savings and all at a 50% discount for the first 50 students only. There's a link in the description where you can register your interest. Great, so you have mindset and discipline on lock, but to complete the CFA charter alongside work, you're going to have to be very productive and efficient in life, not just while studying. Now, the key message here is that not all study hours are equivalent. I often hear people say, I studied three to 500 hours and I still failed. Should I have studied more? The answer is no, you should have studied better. You don't have endless amounts of time, so you need to be an efficient learner, especially if you want to balance work, family time, leisure, and stay healthy and motivated alongside the CFA. So the objective here is to maximize your learning during study sessions so you can study less. Here's how. So the first thing is get consistent sleep. So ideally seven to eight hours at the same time each day with no heavy meals or screen time before bed. This aligns your circadian rhythm, enhances the quality of your sleep and keeps your mind sharp and ready to absorb information, which increases the chances of a productive study session. If you sacrifice your sleep for nights out, movies or whatever else keeps you up, you're voluntarily reducing your chance of passing the CFA. So it's your call. Number two, study in the morning so take advantage of your body's natural cognitive peak first thing in the morning where your sharpest is biologically proven. So I'd suggest get up at 6am, stretch or move for 15 minutes to get the blood flowing and then black coffee to kickstart the day. Ideally start by 7am and aim for one to two hours of focus study in the morning. Do this either at home or by getting into the office early in the morning. Number three, optimize your study environment. So choose a quiet, comfortable location like a library, cafe or dedicated study room. Keep your study space organized and free from distractions, particularly your phone. So get that out of the room, it's a huge distraction. And if you can, invest in quality study materials and gear such as pens, notes, notebooks, a comfortable chair, etc., because it makes the study process more enjoyable. Number four, get locked in. Now, everything that I've just mentioned will help, but here's a few ways you can take it to the next level. Now, the use of caffeine is well documented, so coffee, tea, matcha, etc. However, nicotine is also a powerful cognitive performance enhancer. Don't smoke, but pouches and gum can be a useful tool. I'm not advocating it, but you're all adults here. Be mindful of the addictive nature, but it can definitely help with studying. Now, if you're studying on a laptop, use apps like Flow to block notifications from certain apps that you use frequently, and this can really help you stay locked in. Now, this next one is very important. Before you start, choose exactly what you're going to study to avoid context switching, i.e. 
switching what you're focusing on during the session. Context switching completely kills your productivity. In fact, every time you switch focus to another topic, it takes 10 minutes to get back into the flow state. So if you study for one hour and you get distracted three times, you only get about 30 minutes of quality study. Keep your study sessions to a maximum of 90 to 120 minutes. And this aligns with the old traded rhythm, which I've mentioned in other videos, but ultimately that's the maximum amount of time you can study for with high focus. Also, it's mentally easier to convince yourself to study for that long versus three to four hours or even more than that, which is mentally overwhelming. And finally, the fifth part of productivity and efficiency is effective learning techniques. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on it as I've done a deep dive in a separate video, which I've linked on screen. However, you should use techniques to maximize the quality of your learning. This includes the PQ3R method, the Feynman technique, first principle thinking, active recall, and space repetition. And finally, buy your notes. This saves you tons of time and allows you to focus on learning rather than writing. I would recommend IFT Wall's notes, which are concise, well presented, and focus on the most testable material. I use them at all three levels, and I attribute my 90th percentile scores to these. The links to the notes are in the description, and I've secured you an exclusive 10% off if you use my name, Harris, as a coupon at checkout, so don't miss out. Before I move on, a common thing that students struggle with is the CFA calculator, which is not the same as the one used at school. The CFA exams are highly time pressured and if you want to pass them, you have to be able to use the calculator efficiently, but most people don't know where to start. So I've put together a completely free guide with everything you need to answer questions quickly and accurately in the exam, saving you time and increasing your chances of success. As I said, it's completely free. Check out the link in the description. Okay, let's move on to managing your workload. The point here is you already have enough to do if you're working and studying the CFA. So it's key to manage your workload on both fronts so you can perform in both as well. So let's start with the CFA. So first up, be consistent, don't cram. Develop a six month study plan which segments the curriculum into manageable chunks. If you need advice on how to do this, check out my study plan video. The link is in the description. Allocate one to two hours per day, four to five times a week, and make sure you leave one to two months at the end to review and practice, which is key. Set realistic study goals for each session and make sure you don't cram too much into it, else you won't be able to achieve it and that'll impact your morale. Then make sure you stick to this plan. Do not resort to cramming because you'll be stressed and you won't actually learn. If you miss a session, don't miss the next one. Once is a mistake, twice is a habit. Then let's talk about managing your workload at work. Now you might think there's nothing you can do, but trust me, there is. Firstly, you need to protect your study time. And this is why I suggest studying in the morning before work, because it reduces the risk of conflicts arising through the day. Tell work that you're studying and that it will improve your performance at work. If you don't tell them, they won't know. And this way they'll respect your study time more. Then at work, you need to become more efficient. That means streamlining your tasks, delegating where possible, saying no to work commitments that encroach into your study time. Now, obviously you need to do this within reason, but generally focus on managing your energy and on high impact activities. Now, a quick note before I move on, if you like this kind of content and you find it valuable, consider hitting like and subscribe. And if you want to see anything else, drop a comment below. Now let's conclude this video by discussing balance and health. Now it's key to maintain a balance between study, work and personal life to avoid burning out. To do this, you need to incorporate healthy habits such as regular exercise, proper nutrition and rest into your daily routine. Now you might say you don't have time for this, but trust me, if you don't, you'll be burnt out and you won't perform anyway. Now any kind of movement is great, stretching, walking, training, sports, take your pick. Nutrition wise, focus on whole foods and try not to eat heavy meals before you study because it'll make you sluggish. And mindfulness, meditation, breathing, walks, time with family and friends, all of these are ways to de-stress and manage your anxiety, which is major key. Now obviously you won't be able to socialize as much as you'd like, but I think it's really important you stay connected with family and friends because they will provide the support and encouragement you need to get through the charter. And finally, try and make friends with other CFA candidates. This is great for morale. You can share resources and tips, maybe join study groups and online forums where you can discuss challenging concepts, ask each other questions, support each other, and generally establish camaraderie. Ultimately, having a support system will make the journey a lot less isolating and a lot more enjoyable. Okay, that's it. If you like this kind of content, you'll love these two up on screen. And otherwise, thanks for your time and see you in the next video.